Federal lawmakers seizing the opportunity of the lockdown to speak to their constituents on the need to observe best practices and adhere to the instructions of the government in the fight against COVID-19. Well, this has become important to dispel some beliefs that this virus isn't real and that it only affects the elites. Welcome to the gavel. I am Terry Ikumi. Now, the number of confirmed cases of COVID-19 in the country has hit three digits in just over a month. The conversation about the coronavirus in the National Assembly began in February and both chambers at the time called on the federal government to guard against the virus entering the country and prepare for better handling if it eventually does. Now, let's begin with a timeline of how federal lawmakers reacted to the coronavirus before the National Assembly was shut down. On the 29th of January, way before the first case of COVID-19 was recorded in Nigeria, the House of Representatives asked the federal government to declare a public health emergency in the country following the outbreak of the virus in China. Even though the virus had not been reported in Nigeria, the lawmakers wanted the government to take preventive measures to ensure that the virus does not make its way into the country. The House is further aware that several countries have taken measures to prevent the spread of this virus to their countries or within their countries. Such measures include strict lockdown of cities, asking anyone who has returned from Wuhan in China in the last 14 days to self-isolate. The House was also worried about the large number of Chinese nationals who left Nigeria to China to celebrate the Lunar New Year and are expected back in the country. By the next legislative day, as more cases were being confirmed in China and the rest of the world, the spokesperson of the House raised a matter of urgent public importance relating to the outbreak of the coronavirus. urgent need to evacuate hopelessly stranded Nigerians in Wuhan and the wider province of Hubei. And those who support me say I. Those against me say nay. They... <laughs> you know, the motion cannot fly. The reaction of the lawmakers prompted a consultation between the Speaker and Mr. Kalu. Honorable colleagues, the Speaker attempted to persuade members to at least listen to the motion. But even that hit a brick wall. We have just proven the saying that uh, the first instinct of um, any human being is self-preservation. So you don't no longer want your brothers back in Nigeria. It's not too urgent like that. Why I say it's not too urgent like that? Because one, China have a better facility than Nigeria. Even the co-sponsors of the motion developed cold feet when they were called upon to second the motion. And what appears like overwhelming misunderstanding of the intent of this motion, we wish to seek leave of the House to step down <laughs> the motion. Uh, Honorable Elumelu, you want to second the motion? He's the co-sponsor of the motion, but he says his mic is not working. Honorable TJ Yusuf. The motion was eventually seconded, but suffered defeat. On the 28th of February, while the lawmakers were worried about the Chinese, the virus was brought into the country by an Italian. Following this, the Senate then invited the Minister of Health to brief the leadership on the level of preparedness of Nigeria to contain the spread of the coronavirus. By then, at least 3,137 people had died from the virus across the world. The Senate had reservations about setting up additional isolation centers in teaching hospitals. I, I have my fears. I don't know if the teaching hospitals are afraid of what happens. The teaching hospitals can be big. We are not praying. But why can't we do something uh, significant? We may not be China, but I, we were told that the Chinese built uh, one uh, one thousand capacity bed in ten days. We may not be able to do that, but can we contrive something? Ministry of Health should be empowered to purchase the 
temperature gauge, the mobile one, not the, the hand carried one, so that you can get into the into the plane and find out people who have uh, who have issues, who have health risks. If we find them out there, you will now carry the plane away because there is a place inside the, plane, the, the airport for emergencies there. So we won't allow even the person to start coming because once that person comes down, he starts meeting our staff one after the other before he before he comes to that uh, temperature gauge. Lawmakers also requested that the Ministry of Health should establish permanent standard isolation centers in the country to respond to future emergencies. On the 4th of March 2020, the Senate leadership further undertook an inspection tour of the isolation center located at the University of Abuja Teaching Hospital, Guagolada. After the inspection of the facilities, the President of the Senate seemed unhappy at the lack of preparedness and the state of the isolation center. We are in a situation that nobody should, should, should be found wanting. Everybody should be at the top of his game. There is no way that uh, Nigeria, the, the largest economy in Africa, with a population of 200 million, and yet in the federal capital and the surrounding states, six of uh, the North Central, you don't have one room that you can call an isolation center where anyone who unfortunately falls into this crisis would be taken to. What are we going to do? On the 10th of March, the Senate assigned a joint committee the task of looking into the current economic challenges caused by the sharp drop of oil prices because of the coronavirus and exacerbated by the price disagreement between Russia and Saudi Arabia. I would like to go through the nitty-gritty. And on the 19th of March, the chairman of the committee presented a preliminary report on the urgent steps taken to handle the crisis. That the Joint Committee will invite the relevant stakeholders to an interactive section. These stakeholders include the Central Bank of Nigeria, the Nigerian Petroleum Corporation, the Ministry of Finance, Budget and National Planning, and engage relevant stakeholders in the business community for their own input and suggestion on the way forward on a continuous basis. Although only one case had been confirmed in Nigeria as at the 3rd of March, a member of the House of Representatives was concerned that the socioeconomic implications of COVID-19 could be very disastrous for the country if new cases are recorded. Concern that with the current situation of health facilities in Nigeria, the virus, if not properly checked or curtailed, will easily be transmitted within the large population and may lead to a wider catastrophe. Note that the federal government needs to move swiftly and intensify collaborations with health agencies. I would like us to take our campaign and awareness, especially to the rural places, our people at the grassroots. They should be aware of this disease. Most of them, they might not have heard about it. There are only two control centers, one in Lagos, one in Abuja. That of Abuja, we are told, is less than 30% completion. Even the one in Lagos, that place was constructed and equipped by the Lagos state government. The minority leader urged the National Assembly to take its own precaution. An Italian man who visited Ogu State, and it turned out to be the constituency of Isiaka that is speaking. I think, Mr. Speaker, in good wisdom, that this House should suspend plenary for a period of two weeks or thereabouts for the purpose of certifying everybody and also allowing management to put measures in place so that all of us can be tested. Those in favor of the amendment say aye. Those against say nay. That's a bit. By the 17th of March, there were three cases of COVID-19 in the country. This prompted the House of Representatives to urge the federal government to immediately cut in half all flights from high-risk countries, especially the UK, Spain, Italy, the USA, China and South Korea except for Nigerian citizens who will be tested on arrival and may be quarantined if necessary. Global pandemic. This was part of the resolutions of the House following a motion on the need for extra measures against the coronavirus, which by then had spread like wildfire across Europe. Urge the federal government and the federal minister of aviation and security agencies to immediately halve all flights from high-risk countries, especially the UK, Spain, Italy, and the US, China, and South Korea, except for Nigerian citizens who will be tested 
on arrival and may be quarantined if necessary. COVID-19 continued to top debate in the National Assembly. On the decision of the Senate. While plenary was ongoing in both chambers on the 18th of March, federal lawmakers received information of five new cases of the virus in the country, bringing the total to eight. People from countries that have been banned from going to the U.S. are now using Nigeria as a route. Let no one travel out now from this chamber to other Dubai, Europe, anywhere. We should, be, we should all be here and support Nigeria to fight this battle. Almost a month after the first case was recorded and eight cases later, President Muhammad Buhari was yet to address the nation. So the Senate passed a resolution urging him to do so as a matter of urgency. I urge Mr. President, Commander-in-Chief, to address the nation on the situation of the COVID-19 in Nigeria. Those in favor of this prayer say aye. Those against any, the ayes have it. The upper chamber also called for a special intervention fund to combat the deadly disease. Urgent public importance. In the House of Representatives, lawmakers rejected an amendment to selectively restrict flights from certain countries, and the deputy speaker made a case for total restriction against foreign flights the lawmakers also debated whether to make exceptions for Nigerian students whose schools have been temporarily shut in affected countries. Do we make an exception for them to be able to get their children back home to hopeful, hopefully safety? Whoever's children, is, I mean, our children are abroad, should endure at this time and allow them to remain there, you can be sure that they are going to get quality health care outside there. And when this blows over, they can come over you or you can go over there and see them. On the third amendment. Then, interestingly, lawmakers accepted an amendment to shut down worship centers, but rejected one to shut down schools. The gathering for open worship, the gathering of people, those in support, please say aye. Those against, please say nay. The ayes have it. The lawmakers also placed restrictions within the National Assembly. We should ban receiving visitors for now. Till, we, till Nigeria is satisfied, COVID-free. So let the House, let's just have members and our staff. The National Assembly finally shuts down on the 24th of March 2020, after the number of cases in the country hit double figures. In the House of Representatives, before adjourning like the Senate, the Speaker presented a motion of urgent public importance for emergency measures against the coronavirus. Demand that the Federal Ministry of Health and the National Center for Disease Control rapidly scale up testing capabilities through the establishment of nationwide testing centers so that we may begin to determine the actual numbers of Nigerians who are already carriers of this COVID-19 disease. To direct the Federal Ministry of Education to immediately make available hostels in the now vacated federal government colleges across the country for use as emergency care centers and isolation units by the Federal Ministry of Health and the National Center for Disease Control. The motion was adopted, but not without some opposition. I object to the use of federal government colleges because the schools have staff quarters and they are not in good shape to, 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 to be as a isolation centers. The House also accelerated the passage of an emergency economic stimulus bill through first, second and third reading. So what this bill seeks in its provision is that if you pay for your employees, you pay your employees' salary, pay ye, pay as you earn, at the end of the year, the government will give you a rebate of 50% of whatever you are paid. The bill is expected to run from the 1st of March 2020 till the 31st of December 2020 and is subject to renewal by the president, if need be. In contributing to defeating the coronavirus outbreak in the country, senators donated half of their salaries, while members of the House of Representatives donated 100% of their salaries for the months of March and April.